back to every other Carl. I'm Carl and today I am skiing arguably one of the best mountains in the United States and of course one of the most legendary mountains, Vail, Colorado. So the interesting thing about this trip is I only have one day to do it. Most people say it takes several days for Vail, even a week. But I'm going to show you how to ski veil in one day. At least, this is my experience. If you didn't know, Vail is one of the largest ski resorts in the world, with 5,289 skiable acres. For comparison, Killington, the largest resort on the U.S. East Coast, has 1,500 skiable acres. You could fit nearly four Killingtons in Vail. And my local mountain in New Jersey, Mountain Creek, which is a perfectly enjoyable resort, as I detailed in a previous video, has 167 skiable acres. You could fit 30 mountain creeks in Vail. It's big. My friend Chong came out to snowboard with me. You might recognize him from our surf trip at Cocoa Beach. He only had one day to snowboard. Also, if you're trying to be on a budget like me, Vail is super expensive at $220 for a weekend day pass. As a side note, if you want to save some money, get a hotel in Denver, not Vail, and bring your own equipment. But no matter what, Vail is worth every penny. So after spending hours scouring Vail blog posts, consulting Vail employees, and reviewing the trail maps, this is my ultimate guide to ski Vail in a day. Let's start off with hours of operation. Vail typically opens at 8.30 a.m., starts closing trails around 3.30, and the whole ski area will basically be closed before sunset. Plan to arrive before 8.30 so you can get a good parking spot and avoid some of the crowds. We started our day by parking at Lion's Head Parking Structure. It costs a little over $20 to park there all day. It's close to the lifts and easy to access from the highway. Speaking of which, do yourself a favor and don't drive to Vail unless you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, or you know for sure that it's not going to snow. The Vail Pass is super treacherous and the weather can change really quickly, as it did for us. From the parking deck, we headed right through the village where several friendly Vail employees guided us to the ticket area and then right over to the Eagle Bond gondola. We planned to take the gondola, but the line was long and the locals told us that the chairlift right next to it, number eight, the Born Free Express, was faster and basically went to the same place. This worked out perfectly. This brought us up for our first runs on Vail's front side. Vail has three main areas, the front side, the back bowls, and Blue Sky Basin which has amazing backcountry and glade skiing. In order to get the full Vail experience, Chang and I plan to ski all three areas. This is not as straightforward as it sounds though. To put it in perspective, Blue Sky Basin is seven miles away from the Vail front side. Anyway, back to the front side. We didn't waste too much time here. We took a couple runs up and down the Pride Express lift to get a feel and get acclimated. The air is a lot thinner up here and you get winded pretty easily if you're not used to it. A popular item in all the stores are these cans of boosted oxygen. Small ones go for $10 and it'll give you about 40 pumps of pure O2. I tried it out for science and honestly I didn't really feel much of a difference. The front side felt very familiar. It felt like east coast skiing. Well groomed trails straight down to the lift. Once we had our feet wet, we left the front side knowing that we would experience more of it later in the day because we'd have to come back this way to get to our car. From the top of Pride Express, we started our trek towards the back bowls. We intended to take Game Creek Express to the Game Creek Bowl, but the signs told us the lines were really long, and the locals said it would be better to ski towards Midvale, take Lift 2, Avanti Express, and then Lift 4, Mountaintop Express, to get us to the entrance of the bowls. That's where Vale started to blow my mind. Welcome to the back bowls. bowls 
are amazing. There's seven bowls all told, one on the front side, four back bowls, and two bowls at Blue Sky Basin. But the back bowls are so vast and so unique. They're like giant funnels where you can ski in any direction. I've skied some pretty awesome mountains, like Mammoth in California, Snowbird in Alta in Utah, other mountains in Colorado, and basically everything on the East Coast. The Vail Bowls are different. That's about all I can say. After a few runs in the bowls, it was time for lunch. Remember, we started skiing at 8.30, so it took us about three hours to ski the front side, take a couple runs in Sundown Bowl, and make it to the top of Sun Up Bowl, where we headed to Two Elk Lodge for a $14 burger and fries, which was honestly really delicious. We left Two Elk Lodge and dropped into China Bowl, headed for Skyline Express. It's a long trek, but Blue Sky Basin is absolutely worth it. We took three or four runs here until the lift closed at 3.30 p.m. This was awesome tree skiing, tons of moguls and steep terrain. Speaking of which, if you're a beginner skier, I definitely would not recommend coming to the backside of Vail. There's very little you can do unless you're a high level intermediate or an advanced skier. If you're a beginner, there's plenty of skiing on the front side. But in my personal opinion, it would be a much better idea to come to Vail when you're a more advanced skier. You'll just be able to enjoy it more. Like I said in the beginning, the lifts start to close around 3.30 on the backside, and Vail starts closing them down strategically so that people don't get stuck. Chong and I were literally the last ones down at Blue Sky Basin. From there, we took the Teacup Express back to the top of the bowls and made our way to the front side. It's a little tricky getting back to the base of Eagle Bun, but as long as you keep going left, you should be okay. We took Cappuccino to Spruce Face to Get Along Road to Spring Catwalk to Born Free and then rode straight over the magical little bridge into the village. What an awesome day. The village was pretty sweet too. And that's gonna do it for Vail. I had an amazing time. I mean, everybody knows Vail is absolutely world-class. One of the greatest ski mountains, if not the best ski mountain in America. I have yet to go to a few others that are uh, way up on top of the list, but I love this place. I hope you learned something. Maybe it'll help you next time you come out to Vail. Um, if you only have limited time here, there's a way to enjoy this place, even with one day. Otherwise, I'm every other Carl. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers this month. That's the goal. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you like the video, please like it. If you want to ask a question or have a comment, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.